There we go. Christ. All right, let's try that again. Welcome to the Kent, the Kansas City Woodworkers Guild. I'm Craig Arnold, president of the Guild. This is the April 2021 general membership meeting. Uh, we're having some uh, problems linking Zoom and uh, Face, or excuse me, YouTube Live tonight to get all of our people on here. So we're recording this to upload later on. So um, we want to go right to show and tell the one or, or we're not doing do any show and tell. We'll do show and tell next month. We'll do show and tell next month. So, so hopefully uh, the participants will be able to rejoin us next month for that. Um, first order of business, I guess, would be the uh, elections. Um, Tim Locke. What's that? You're getting a feedback loop. Someone needs to turn the mic on. Hold on. There we go. There we go. Too many of us too close together. <laughs> We're feedbacking each other here. Uh, so, Tim, you want to do the elections? You've got results from. I can pull them up on the screen here. Give me a second here. Tim, you're up. Thank you. We've had a, a vote of the membership. Uh, and the vote's been electronic. And the members have voted in excess of the minimum required quorum, which was uh, determined to be 77 votes. We uh, actually had a total of 105 uh, documented legal uh, votes. Apparently one non-member voted and that vote is uh, discounted by our secretary. And so we do have a uh, a new slate of, uh, or we've re-elected our, our previous slate of uh, board of directors and LC chairs. The, uh, the positions that were open and have been re-elected is uh, Gary Melke and uh, Mike McCauley have been re-elected to the board and the leadership chairman, leadership directors that have, uh, are returning for another term, our assets, Chuck Saunders, events, Chris McCauley, programs, Matt Nowak, and sponsorship, Dwayne Miller. Uh, the, the board will meet in a uh, special session tonight and will uh, appoint the board, the, the guild's officers, uh, for the two positions that were open for treasurer and secretary. Thank you. Any questions? Back to you, Craig. All righty. Thank you, Tim. Um, let's see. As far as <laughs> this being on Zoom has thrown us off a little bit. <laughs> we don't have all, all the pretty graphics to look at. Um, Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, just uh, Chuck Saunders did want to uh, remind everyone that the Steel City Drill Press is still for sale. It's one hundred and fifty dollars. You can find out information about that on the Guild's webpage. page. Uh, you might have to search for the auctions and sales on there. Um, the Communications Committee, which does a great job on getting the newsletter out and uh, maintaining the website, and make sure you all know about classes in a timely manner, doing a great job. Ron Hall heads up that committee. Uh, he does uh, ask if you have an article that you'd like to submit uh, to send it to him at communications at kcwg.org. Uh, also, uh, please uh, come to the Facebook group. It is uh, Kansas City Woodworkers Guild page. Search for that, join that. Uh, also on Instagram, where the Kansas City, I should say Kansas City Woodworkers Guild we're also on Twitter at KCW Guild. 
uh, on YouTube. Don't forget to uh, subscribe and ring the bell so that way you'll be notified when there is uh, meetings coming up. If you subscribe, ring the bell, they'll know when the video goes live. Yeah, and you'll also know when the video goes live. So um, let's see. Any of the other, uh, one important thing, uh, Amazon Smile, uh, use our sponsors. Uh, um, you know, when you go out to shop at Woodcraft or l &K Hardwoods, which is a new sponsor, if you shop at any of our sponsors listed on the Guild's webpage, be sure to show your membership card. I know at Woodcraft, uh, if you don't have your card, we're not going to give you a discount. Uh, sorry, even though I might know you. The boss is kind of adamant about that. And it's only because his boss, the owner of our store, is adamant about that. He's uh, feel like he's getting taken advantage of at some of the other stores. Not our fault, not anyone in the guild, but uh, the club discounts are just coming in too much. So we've got to see your card. Um, I think uh, you should have had ample time to get paid and come down here to pick up your card, in my opinion. Uh, if you don't have your card, please come down here and get it. Um, uh, there's a little file up front that any of the shop foreman knows where it is. They can help you get your card. Um, let's see. What else do I want to talk about? Oh, we have uh, a lot of the SIGs are, are meeting again. Uh, it's the CNC SIG meeting, Gary. CNC SIG. Okay, we uh, the CNC SIG will be meeting on the fourth Wednesday of the month at 6.30 p.m. Uh, also, uh, the Woodcarver SIG, I know that there's a few people that come on the fourth Tuesday of the month from six to nine. They meet over in uh, classroom number two, which is the hand tool room or the scroll saw room. Um, the hand tool SIG is the fourth Sunday of each month from two to four. The power tool SIG is the first Sunday of each month from three to five. And the scroll saw SIG is uh, the second Wednesday of the month. Uh, that's always a fun one. Uh, John Tegler does a great job at leading that SIG as well. As well. And they also host uh, an open shop on Saturdays after the uh, board meet or after the membership meeting. Uh, if you're interested in scroll sawing, uh, that's a great time to come down and look at uh, what uh, what they do. Um, Vicki, uh, we'll go on to our program now. Uh, Vicki uh, Hennon is, uh, that's all I have on here is her name. I don't know what she does because Matt didn't give me any information. <laughs> and I see Vicki laughing. No, no so song Vicky, and dance. I'm going to turn it over okay. to you if you would introduce yourself. Uh, <laughs> tell us why you're important to woodworking. <laughs> And uh, we'll I'm a nobody. <laughs> right. Oh, yes, um, the marquetry. That's right. Oh, I, I, this is cool. I'm excited to see this one. So thank you for being here, Vicki. I appreciate okay. that. And um, I do want your address because we'll, we'll send you a little gift. All right. Oh, good. After the, after <laughs> the right, meeting. Um, I'm going to want to work with you to make sure that I can share the screen and you can see my my slides. Okay, Chris, are you taking that over? Um, yeah, Vicki, go ahead and share your screen. Okay. Make sure, please make sure your microphones are muted. Um, I'm not allowed to share my screen. You, you have my uh, share screen disabled. There we go. Okay, do we see, I still don't have the right screen, do I? Chris, are you there? Yeah, Vicki, uh, you're not showing up yet. You should have share screen access now. There he goes. Okay, now you see one. Yeah, the ocean bed, it's, it's, you're on the right screen. Okay, thank you. Okay. 
Well, okay, we're having fun now, I'm sure. <laughs> um, well, I want to thank you for inviting me to, to talk today. Um, and what I'm going to talk about is the veneering of the ocean bed that I made. And let me get one more thing set up here. Um, so just as, as a little background, here's a, a photo of the bed I submitted to the 2019 Design and Wood show in San Diego. Um, this piece, it took first place in the design of um, furniture design in, in veneering. And so what I will be talking about is how I made this ocean scene here. And no, it is not paint. I can't tell you how many people asked me if it was painted. No, it's all veneer work. So the, um, just as a background, the bed itself is made out of cherry. And I wanted the, uh, I'm trying to get rid of this. I'm trying to get, let's see. The, the bread frame is made out of cherry. And I wanted to also carry the theme of the flowing water and the ocean into the bed frame itself. So that's why there are a lot of curves in the bed instead of all just straight, straight angles. Um, this panel is 48 inches by 13 inches tall. And the most important thing for me was to be able to depict a sense of movement and depth in the ocean. Um, so I had to do a lot of experiments to see what worked and what didn't. And the problems were to get the veneer to curve enough and to get the variation in colors to create the sense of movement. So my experiments. Traditionally, marquetry is done by laying the veneer flat on a flat surface. So that's where I started with my experiments. First in the upper right was a flat sheet of veneer with straight grain. And I cut wedges where these little red marks are. I cut wedges out here and then re-glued the veneer back together to try to get a curve in the grain. And, and that wasn't as successful as I would have liked. The other thing I did was I tried to inlay some other veneer strips in and I just could not bend them the way I wanted to. And up here, I did a little test of the crest of the wave interfacing with the water, trying to get the contours. And this is the beginnings of what I call my, my foamy bits. So the, the, the foam in the wave was that was my first attempt. So on the, the left side here, I did some more experiments with the white foam of the wave trying to put the ocean in with strips and that was highly unsuccessful. And then more little experiments with trying to get foam in there, which was also a, a non-success. So I went on to another test and took what I found from the previous tests and decided what it really wanted was the veneer wanted to be on its edge so that I could bend it the way I wanted to because I couldn't bend it when it was flat. So here I took the strips and I put them on edge and stacked them together and I wanted to see how tedious it might be and if I discovered any other major issues with trying to get this done. And I, it worked with just some minor issues that seemed to be easy to resolve. Um, I found that there were blunt end, the blunt ends equaled just too many gaps and it wasn't keeping, not keeping the strips together, tightly together created too many gaps and attempt to fill the gaps I used white filler, which you can see here, and that 
I wasn't happy with that. I also tried to tint the filler to a blue and that was also not good. And then again, more tests with trying to do my little foamy bits. And I also did a test um, later on dividing it here and, and putting shellac on one side and, and lacquer on the other just to see how a finish would, would react with my strips and the CA glue that I was using. So what I came up with was a working base, which consisted of, from the bottom up, a piece of masonite hardboard, which I used contact cement to apply a sheet of eighth inch cork to that. And that was to give me something to put pins in to help hold the strips together and keep them against each other. And here is a piece of wax paper, which I later discovered I needed to have because the CA glue would then connect itself to the cork and I would have a mess. So on top of the wax paper is what I call the foundation veneer, which is my working surface where I would connect the strips and the other flat pieces of the veneer to make up the, the picture. So what I got was a bunch of store-bought, commercially dyed flat veneer. And I've lost, there we go, um, in all the shades of blue that I could get, and then white, and I got bright white, because that's what I wanted for my picture. Um, and I also had realized with my experiments that it had to be perfectly flat. I couldn't have wavy veneer or potato chippy veneer, where it was all twisted in various angles because it was impossible to keep the strips together. Um, so the veneer I used was store-bought. I bought it from B&B Rare Woods. Um, they have fantastic veneer. It's all flat. It's all dyed all the way through. The colors don't run. So I didn't do anything else. I had to do no conditioning, no soaking, no heating, nothing. And to cut the strips, my method is I use a straight edge of MDF that has a straight edge along its left edge since I'll disclose now I'm a right-hander. So this will be from a right-handed perspective. Um, so this edge is very straight. My spacer, I cut a piece of MDF that was 330 seconds wide. Obviously this is the face side the edge is what I used. And then this is my cutting cutting edge. So I would take the straight edge and slide it up to the right side of my piece of veneer. Put in my spacer, my 332nd spacer, which is here, and then slide in my cutting edge next to that. Remove the straight edge, remove the spacer, and here I have the strip that I'm going to cut. And I use a scalpel um, with a number 25 blade that works for me, um, whatever you're comfortable with, but it, it cuts the, uh, the veneer very easily in a couple of strokes. And it's, it's nice because I don't have any waste. I'm not using a table saw and, and lose half my veneer to dust. So I, I, I use the whole sheet of veneer rather efficiently, which is nice. And then the other tools beyond the uh, straight edges that I used, as I use the tight bond, CA super fast, thin, and I also use the, the small tip adapter. And one of the little tricks with this guy is, um, when you've used it, there'll be CA glue stuck up in here and it will try to cure. And then you have a tip that doesn't work anymore, but taking the bottle and tapping it on its bottom a couple times onto the top of your workbench 
clears the nozzle and you're good, no problems. I also use the Type Bond um, aerosol activator, which worked much better for me because the little pump style was too spitty for me. It just comes out in, in bigger drops than I like. I guess spitty is a new word. Um, so the Type Bond aerosol activator. And then I discovered Type Bond has a translucent glue which is absolutely excellent and worked wonderful me, for me. And I will explain in the next couple of slides um, how that worked. The other thing were little straight pins. And um, I tried all sorts of different, different kinds. And I found the, the little normal straight pins with the little plastic ball on the end was really kind of a finger saver. So that worked well. Along, okay, this is my scalpel, my pathology scalpel with a number 25 blade. I also have a the craft knife because it had a um, stiffer blade and that comes from Swan Morton and it's a it's a wonderful tool. I love it. So I needed a stiffer blade for doing the scarf joints and I'll explain that later when we get to it. So here, here we go. This is my picture. <laughs> Um, I found a picture on the internet that I really liked and it was painted by, and I'm going to butcher this poor guy's name, but it's Yohara Konin, a Japanese artist, and I'm sure I've just massacred it, um, but he did a lot of these paintings years ago and I found a little 12 inch by 5 inch picture which was this, and I blew it up and blew it up and blew it up until it was getting too fuzzy. <laughs> and it still wasn't the size I wanted. Um, so I took some artistic liberties and just used eyeball to get shapes and places and locations to try to stretch it out and and condense it down to get the the format I wanted so it would fit on the footboard. And this piece here is my first template that I used to create the first wave. And where the red line is, is where I was gonna start. So I needed, well, I found in my experiments, I needed kind of like a back, backstop to press the strips against so that I could get them to stand up and start stacking strips together so that I could glue them up. Um, so that's the only reason for this template is to just get started um, a little. And it's only eighth inch scrap plywood. It was nothing fantastic. I just drew the curve that I wanted and sanded it down. Um, because of the CA glue, I had to wax the edge and the underneath to keep it from sticking to my design. And I ended up making um, just three templates for all of this to get me started on all the curves I wanted. So here's a zoom in, hard to see, of the template with one strip put against it with the pins holding it in place. And I only needed pins where I needed it to be pushed against the template um, so that there were no gaps. So here's kind of a close up of, of that area where I was starting up here. And I would take strips and put them together, but I wouldn't make them the same color all the way across. And I know this is a little blurry, but as you can see, there are colors and they change colors as they go across. So there's dark ones, white, um, goes to a lighter blue. And that to me gave it the sense of motion. If it were just all the same color all the way across, it would look very flat. Um, the other thing I did is what I call the expansion and contraction areas. So you can see these are pretty much all strips that run end to end going across. Down here, 
you can see where the strips come across, but then there are other strips inserted in the middle and then these go around. So this area is now expanded from this area, having these other strips added in. And that to me gave it more of a sense of motion also. So how I did that. What I would do when I was transitioning from just one color to the next color is I put the first color in and cut a scarf joint at the end. So just a little bit of an angle. I, I found in my test that if I did a flat straight cut here and just abutted another piece to it, it looked chunky. It didn't look graceful. It didn't look like it flowed. So I created a scarf joint. And then on the next piece, I would cut a scarf joint and mate the scarves up together, holding the scarf to scarf together. And using as many pins as I needed to keep stuff shoved against itself. Um, and that's where the craft knife came in handy was cutting the scarf joints is, is having a stiffer knife and cutting across so that vertically it would be straight across when I put the strip on its edge. And I could put in about five to seven rows of strips before I needed to use the CA glue to hold them together. Otherwise, if I, if I tried to go out too far, they would tend to pop up and not hold and, and I'd have to replace them all over again. <laughs> So every five to seven rows, I would just drizzle on some of the CA glue and then spritz it with the activator and then just continue right on. I didn't really have to wait at all. It was just very quick. So here I'm showing where I'm doing an expansion where I have some strips put in. This is a, a scarf joint here with this one strip here. Then on the next slide, I've got the, another strip and then a third strip, all with scarf joints on them. And they're staggered so that when I put another strip against it, it just gently widens out into a wider area. So that's what I'm calling an, an expansion. And then just using however many pins I needed to make it stay together and then gluing when I had to. So the templates worked great for, you know, the, the, the flowing curves that I was trying to create. But then I had other areas where I would have, you know, a foamy surf area and I would then have to have strips in that area. And I had no real template I could make. So what I did is I, cut my foamy area out of the white to use as the backstop for all the strips to run into so that I could make this edge as clean as I possibly could. So now we get into the um, more complicated part. <laughs> So realizing that these strips are 3.30 seconds tall, standing up. Um, and if I have one sheet of veneer here, that's pretty short. And what I wanted to do, and I, what I found out with my foamy bits, is I wanted to have the base foam part, add my little bits in, and then put another sheet on top of that. So I would cut the contours of the areas that I was trying to work on before I would do the strips and before I put the foamy bits in. So here are those cute little foamy bits. Um, and I know this is called like featherization or there's some other names for it too. And I realized that I could have 
zip these through a coffee grinder to get a little bit finer um, shape and less straight edges, fewer straight edges. Um, but it worked out okay. And this, this is a little bit blurry because it's zoomed in too far. Um, but you can see the, the, the foamy bits are put in and the white is right against it. And this is really the last, the only picture where you can see that um, there's really no ghost glue line. And I will explain that right here. So what I would do with these white areas is put down the original layer of white with the contours that I wanted. Then I would in stages add my little chunks of foamy bits for all the little froth. And then I would put the second layer of white on top of that. Well, the first layer would get veneer pressed in with a tight bond translucent glue. The second layer would get glued on after the foamy bits were put on with CA glue. And I would put the translucent glue underneath this second layer of white to hold it down and vacuum press it. So that went on for this whole thing here. And the idea was for the foamy bits to be obstacles underneath the white. And when it got sanded off, I'd sand through the top layer of white exposing the foamy bits and have a flat surface. I didn't want a bumpy surface. So I, that's why I have the multiple layers. And that's why I did it this way is I didn't want it to be um, topographical per se. Um, so that also meant that like this area with the dark blue had to be two layers of blue, even though I wasn't going to stand through it. I just wanted it to be coplanar. Um, so all these contours were cut with this area, two layers of blue, two layers of white to cut the contour with the scroll saw. And the areas that would abut to the strips were um, overlapping. They would just run wild over the top of the strips so that I could sand it down and have it contour and not leave gaps spaces um, between the strips. So this is where it got a little hairy, but it just took time. And I did this in many, many stages. I think for this whole area here, I did four glue ups to get this whole section done. And I did two glue ups for this area. So I basically cut this in half, did one half and then the other half. And this is also two layers here for the, the coat, the sky. Um, but the translucent glue was just wonderful. You wouldn't see any ghosting around the, the sand through where I would sand through and it would just show glue. And it didn't show up with the finish. I did a spray lacquer. So none of it, none of it showed with the translucent glue. I am a believer. And that is the bed. Um, this part was done with the traditional stack cutting of veneers, uh, but this was the uh, kind of unique method. <laughs> Um, but I was quite happy with it, and I came up, you know, I've come up with another few ideas on other things to do besides the ocean and, um, you know, time and good weather and all that. <laughs> I'll, I'll hopefully get those done. So that's basically the presentation, and if there's questions, I'm happy to answer them. Do I need to unmute something?
Yeah. Trying to unmute there. There we go. Oh, okay. Um, that's fascinating with the, the layering of the glue like that. Have you ever used the uh, tight bond uh, thick and quick glue? Uh, no, I haven't tried that yet. Um, yeah, I've used that their, is yeah, I, I use their, they have a veneer glue, which I did not like. I used that years ago and hated it. It was too thin. Yeah, it's great um, for um, some veneering, like pressing, that type of stuff. Yeah. Uh, the thick and quick is also a transparent glue. When it dries, it dries water clear. Okay. I don't know if you'd ever considered that. No, I've, had experience I've got with some. That. I just haven't used it yet. But I found the transparent glue to be just the translucent to be just absolutely wonderful. Oh, very nice. Uh, do we have any other questions from our uh, members that have stuck with us here? Unmute your camera, oh, I've been told to unmute my camera. There we go. Unmute your camera. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> Hey, Craig, I, I have a question. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, how, uh, how did you do the sanding? Because I don't have nearly the experience, but every time I try to sand anything kind of up on edge like that, I tear the living snot out of it. Um, I, I used a um, basically a palm sander with a hard pad on it. I took the soft pad off, and I have a hard pad that goes on it so that it won't adhere to the contours. So I used the hard pad and, and sanded the strips down to meet the veneers that were just two layers. And then to start sanding through the white to get the little foamy bits to show up. But it's just using a palm sander is all I use to go back and forth till I, I got it flat. It worked great. Okay, cool. Thanks. I was that's actually simpler than I was thinking. So that's great. Thank you. Sure. And that's a palm sander, like a, a square. Uh, I have a round one, a random orbit. Okay, like a random orbit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. I'm still looking at this picture. All this, my uh, sister-in-law and brother-in-law live in Florida, and this would fit perfectly into their home. <laughs> <laughs> They would love that. Well, well, the, this bed frame right here Your is what project. I had to use to send it to the show. And I, I call it my queen size doll bed because it's <laughs> got the short rails on it for the show. <laughs> it's for short people. <laughs> it's, it's for little dolls. 20 dolls will fit in there. Very nice. Any other Thank questions you. from the participants? Uh, I do have a question. Uh, Go ahead, Larry. It's not really related to this. Uh, because um, it seems like you did this mostly drawing by hand from a from a, a, a photograph. But do you have a good program that goes from takes a photograph and makes a marquetry pattern out of it? I have a Mac and haven't found one that works for me. Well, I've, I've been able to do other things where I could make um, take something from the web that I find and through a, let's see, a little uh, photography app that I have, get the size that I want. And then I'll just print it out in black and white. <laughs> and I guess I do it the hard way too, because I will trace over certain areas that I want or to, to modify and make a transparency of, of that. But my, my thing was just getting things to the right size. And that, that picture here, I, I couldn't get the size I wanted from the, the web picture that I got. It was just the aspect ratio was totally off. So I just, you know, took some license and modified it by eye. I have another question. You're, uh... Your composite, the, uh, the, the long pieces of 332nd, um, that's a veneer enough that's 332nd of an inch thick, basically. And, um, right? No, it, it, it's regular thickness veneer. What is it? Um, yeah, yeah, but it's uh, you're gluing it on edge. Yes. 
And so when it showed up, it's 332nd on the NASDAQ, right? Exactly. And now uh, your uh, foamy things, you're, those are two layers of standard veneer, I guess. So. Yes. You're nowhere near the 330 seconds. No. So, so that's why the veneer strips would would get sanded down. You're doing all that with sanding. Okay. Yeah. So those would get sanded down. And one thing about the pins, too, is that kind of helped in the gluing. And since I was paranoid, I did all the strips first and did all the flat areas later. But I glued my piece to the substrate, which was a half inch sheet of MDF. And because the pinholes that went through the veneer that would hold the strips together, I had that on the backing. So a little bit of my um, plastic resin glue would come in to help hold, I think, the strips. And, you know, I, I transported this in the car from Denver to San Diego. It sat 100 yards from the ocean <laughs> for weeks <laughs> and then was thrown back in the car and driven back to Colorado. And I've been using it for two years and it's nothing has come off, nothing has popped, nothing has bulged. So I'm, I'm extremely happy with how it's held together. Well, that's lovely. Thank I'm you. I'm not sure I have the patience for that. Well, it was kind of a Zen thing. <laughs> you know, I, I, I could sit and turn music on or, or listen to a book and, you know, I would just look at my picture and then go, okay, I want to start going into some blues and some whites here and, so it's kind of a Zen thing. I'm just fascinated that you you did all the experimentation. That's that's the fun part, I guess. <laughs> well, it, it may not be obvious, but I'm a retired engineer, so that's what we do. <laughs> test test things until they work. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I feel better when I do testing than trying to do something and go, oh, it doesn't work, and then I you know you want to give up on it. But if I tell myself, okay, I'm going to test this method, test that method, and see what works, what doesn't work, then it, it's more fun for me. It, it just, you know, I could just say, okay, well, that didn't work out so well, but here were the problems, and how might I solve those? Well, I too was an experimental scientist. So you understand the pathology, right? <laughs> Actually, 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 I was a pathologist. <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> okay. Um, never cut myself, instantly. That's but a good that thing. Has to do with architecture. It's taking things apart. And yeah, putting not them putting them together, huh? Okay, thank you, Larry. Uh, you have uh, any of the participants have any other questions for Vicki? And unmute your microphone if you do. <laughs> so, <laughs> looking here to see who's muted and not. So, um, well, Vicki, thank you very much for uh, coming to visit us all the way from Colorado. We appreciate well, that. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, just beautiful work. I just love that kind of stuff. Well, so, I'm, I'm I like happy to I share like, too and want people to yeah. use it in their own little bag of tricks too. So, yeah. It, yeah, it, no, it, I just, I, I love the original artwork. Uh, a lot of uh, woodworking seems like it's uh, like me. I build arts and craft style furniture, you know, from a hundred years ago. Uh, not really original, but uh, I think what you've done here is just beautiful uh, original work. So thank you for sharing it with us. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. uh, and if you can stick around a little bit, I need to get your address to send oh, okay. you our special gift. All right, that only speakers that attend and, and uh, uh, speak to our guild membership yet. So uh, hold on here for a little bit after sure, we get sure. uh, adjourned. No um, let's see, for the uh, uh, rest of the guild members, thank you very much for enduring uh, our problems tonight. Uh, I will try to get this uh,
better organized. I know Chris is over there pulling his hair out, wondering, it worked on Sunday, it worked on Monday, but why is it not working now? So he's going to try to uh, figure that out here uh, before the next meeting. So uh, again, thank you all for attending. Uh, uh, we'll see you next month. Be sure to show your membership cards uh, at Guild Sponsors to get your discounts. And uh, thank you. So good night. Good night. Thank mm -hmm. you.